Hi viewers, today I am going to explain evolution the last part. Actually today I have taken a large uh, point and a large a number of points although it may not be finished in the single video then I will the later on portion in the next video I will explain and I will try to compile most of the things in an easy way and main thing everything I will show you pictorial today our main session maximum will be in the picture based otherwise very problem to explanation theoretically although the chapter is very theoretical so today I will give maximum slide based so today what topic we will explain that is speciation allopatric and sympatric I will explain then microevolution macroevolution then mutation it is very important topic mutation that is for the evolution genetic drift homologous organ analogous organ vestigial organ then fossil fossilization how fossilization occur then determination the age of the fossil it is also very important because this is uh, frequently asked in the exam relative dating and absolute dating two types of datings then evolution by stages evolution ladder versus evolution tree this is also very important thing which one is the more accepted nowadays the evolution tree is more accepted than the evolution ladder than the human evolution about the these things i will explain uh, one by one now you just see a quick review and if you are interested and please subscribe my channel and give a like Now you see allopatric sympatric speciation, microevolution, macroevolution, reproductive isolation, behavioral isolation, mutation, genetic drift, homologous organ, analogous organ, vestigial organ. This is also a example of vestigial organ this is the fossils this is the trilobites dinosaurs phasoceros fossil history of horse this is another slide of horse archaeopteris fossilization formation of fossil absolute dating this is the example of absolute dating so let us start that is the speciation it is the formation of new species from an existing one due to reproductive isolation of a section of its population that is reproductive isolation that is two male and female are totally different therefore they cannot interbreed among each other so this is called speciation earlier they were from the same race or from the same family but now due to different sections their reproduction reproductive ability has lost that is their morphologically they have changed so speciation is of two types allopatric speciation you just see allopatric speciation it is the formation of new species from populations occurring in different and mutually exclusive areas of distribution you just see the first one is original species this one is the original species here you see this is original this original species ultimately separated into two halves that is they are geographically barrier that means one is one area another has gone in another area 
one has gone in one district another in another district then what happens due to their geographical changes that is here may be more rainfall here may be the less rainfall then ultimately their food habit their amount of food that means the fodders what things they are getting they are different so they have morphologically different and ultimately reproductive isolation now you see that two different species are formed this is called allopatric allopatric due to that geographical barrier they have changed their total morphology and ultimately we are getting two different one and two these are the two different morphologically dissimilar organisms we can see next is the sympatric speciation the sympatric speciation is development of new species from a segment of population in the same area due to some intrinsic factors like mutations here you see some mutation mutation i'll explain later on mutation means the changing of chromosomal sequence this is the original population this original population some species or some particular individuals they have changed due to mutation and ultimately two different species are formed they are also they cannot interbreed each other so they are changes their morphology morphology means that is their structural differences are formed next you see this is called micro evolution so micro evolution it is the formation of new variants due to gene mutation and gene recombination for example pesticide resistant high temperature resistant here you see from here only one resistant variety this is here only one resistant variety this is for example here pesticides that i have given all has died only except one this is survived and this is survived and ultimately this one will form a particular group which is totally that that particular pest or that particular pesticide resistant so this is called the micro evolution then about the macro evolution it is the development of different genera and higher taxa so this is called the macro evolution step by step they are growing to higher and higher organisms next step is the reproductive isolation due to speciation the gene pool of a section of population separate from the rest and inability to interbreed of the two populations to and due to the difference in the morphology of the reproductive organs behavior mating time and physiological incompatibility it is ultimately called the reproductive isolation now you have to see this is horse and donkey ultimately we are getting the mule so mule is reproductive isolated and mule that therefore it is sterile mule cannot produce new mule so this is called the reproductive isolation here you see the example of behavioral isolation behavioral isolation earlier these two birds were present in the same area due to going in different areas their music their sound their voice totally changed and this is called the behavioral isolation since it is behavioral isolation its behavior and its behavior it is changed therefore their language that is their sound which sound they are producing this has been changed so now you see this is the most important as i have told mutation mutation is called the genetic isolation mutation means changes of chromosomal sequence this is the dna and this is the replication of dna from one dna two dna is formed now here you see here some particular 
स्ट्रीप और पर्टिकुलर जीन सीक्वेंस दे हैव चेंज एंड सिंस दे हैव चेंज देन अल्टीमेटली दे हैव फॉर्म इन टू ए म्यूटन वेराइटी म्यूटन मीन्स चेंजिंग ऑफ द क्रोमोजोमल सिक्वेंस हेर यू सी इट इज ओरिजिनल एंड दिस इज ओरिजिनल एंड दिस इज द म्यूटन एंड सिंस म्यूटन एंड चेंजेस दो सो देयर करेक्टर्स ऑल्सो चेंजेस सो ट्राई टू रिमेंबर म्यूटेशन मीन्स चेंजिंग ऑफ क्रोमोजोमल सिक्वेंस and since chromosomal sequence changes then their characters also change this is the genetic isolation or it is the molecular biology it is coming under the molecular biology or gene level so next you see very interesting thing is the genetic drift actually genetic drift it is occur due to accidental phenomenon here you see blue and red beetles are there they blue and red they were in the earlier in the 5 is to 5 ratio and due to insecticides or due to some accident what happens some by the net some blue insects or blue beetles they has been captured and they have been killed then what happens Here five is to five ratio is there. Later on five is to one ratio, but both of them has the same survival capacity. By but by accidental, out of five you see four has been cast. So out of five four has been dead. Then ultimately when they will reproduce only one left. So here from one two is coming, and from here eight ten is coming. So then ratio is ten is to two. So red. beetles are dominated so this is called genetic drift genetic drift it is a change in allele frequency due to a chance of event or some accidental occurring next you see this is very important and always ask question in the exam homologous organ all of these organs are the four limb four limb of man four limb of dog four limb of bird and four limb of whale so our hand and the four limb of dog then the wings of bird and pedals of whale all are morphologically similar but their function is totally different so when morphological similar or the origin is same their origin is same but the function is different then they are called the homologous organ the actual definition is they are the organs which have a similar basic pattern that is similar internal structure and similar origin but may have become different externally with different functions and the, and these are called homologous organs next the we see analogous organ analogous organ their function is same but their origin is different this is the wings of bird wings of bat and wings of butterfly you see butterfly wings are originated from the skin and wings of bat and uh, wings of bird they are the modification of their limbs there is four limb or hind limb next you see vestigial organ vestigial organ that is some organs now we have no function due to our advancement in the brain has developed maximum thus some changes occur to the brain and and therefore these organs now we no need like muscles of ear ear we no need to rotate our ear then that this is the nictitating membrane then pointed canine teeth then the third molar teeth these are has no use some uh, uh, some then this is a very important organ that is the appendix vermiform appendix appendix is generally doctors used to cut the appendix due to appendix earlier it was the cecum in case of monkey gorilla orangutan cecum is there where the it is that it is the 
junction of small intestine and large intestine so here the food used to take some rest but in case of human being from small intestine food directly enter to the large intestine therefore there is no use of this particular organ therefore it is it is a totally vestigial organ vermiform appendix then segmental muscles then caudal vertebrae caudal vertebrae that is the vertebrae which is responsible for the tail and human being no need tail therefore it is already abolished but the bone is present this is you see the vermiform appendix and the nictitating membrane this appendix has no function ilium has the function that is ilium is the last part of the small intestine and colon is the first part of the large intestine nictitating membrane here we see nictitating membrane it has no function earlier the nictitating membrane in case of frog it is covered all over the eye next we will come to the fossils how fossils are formed so fossilization we are getting the trilobites fossils are often called as a written document of the evolution so first fossil we have got about the trilobites this is <coughs> are present with rajasaras so this is another form of dinosaur that is the reptiles and trilobites and this is the rajasaras both of them has got, has got in the same time they have extinct in the same time and they have some similarities in their evolution at the time of the paleozoic so if we will get the ages of the fossils they are paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic so paleozoic are the most ancient paleozoic are the most ancient type of fossils this is the rajasaras is the found at the time of trilobites so fossil history of horse we have already we have got that is this has been changed from eohippus mesohippus merichippus pilohippus and then equus equus is the our modern horse so here you see eohippus mesohippus merichippus and pleohippus all of them are extinct but the equus equus means our modern horse this is survived so since all these organisms we have got 1 2 3 4 this is the systematically we have got therefore we can conclude that the horse has evolved from this systematic organisms eohippus mesohippus merichippus pleohippus and equus this is the archaeopteris the first bird it has some reptiles characters and some bird characters so archaeopteris is called the first bird so one thing you please see in archaeopteris there is teeth in their mouth but modern bird has no teeth this is the characteristics of reptiles reptiles has teeth so pieces amphibia reptilia then apes so archaeopteris it can fly from one place to another and it has just started to fly next we will come to the fossilization how fossilization occurs so fossilization occurs in bogs lava and at the bottom of deep water where there is little oxygen and rate of decay is slow or absent that is if the rate of decay is absent or slow then only we can get the fossils most of the fossils are found in sedimentary rocks which develop at the bottom of a deep lake and sea so we just see these are the different layers of the sedimentary rocks and different layers the different types of organisms have been found 
Sometimes conditions exist when decomposition is slow or absent. For example, hot mud, acidic environment, heavy deposition of silt. So under acidic condition, some silica may penetrate and the cells of dead organism are formed perfectly fossils and then we will get the whole organism as the mass of rocks that is the this is just like rock architecture just we can think it is the this is the uh, this is a head or skull of rocks or stone next is the main topic that is the how to measure the age of the fossils so relative age of the fossil how we can measure this is the relative age relative age means paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic whenever we will get more depth of the soil the fossils therefore their age is more and whose we are getting in the less depth of the soil they are the relatively less aged fossil so this is called the absolute dating absolute dating how that is called the carbon 14 dating or uranium dating they have some half life so next slide i am showing half life so this is just a piece of wood so whenever age is zero then 100 percent c14 is there about 5730 years that is approximately 6000 years is carbon 14 c14 carbon 14 will be 50 percent if an fossil possesses 50 percent of carbon 14 that means its age is approximately 6000 years if 25 percent its age is approximately 11000 years or 11500 years if its carbon content is 12.5 percent its age is about 18000 years or 17190 years so this is called the absolute dating by uranium also we can measure but it is used for fossils of higher and higher old that is who are millions and millions years of age next evolution of eye how eye is evolved so here you see evolution of eye that is here only in the plan area we are seeing only the eye spots since eye spots are there they are photoreceptive the next you see insects insects possess eyes and their eyes are compound eyes and crustaceans possess <coughs> simple eye all the crustaceans that is the mollusk they possess simple eye so this is you see compound eye of insects all the insect possess this compound eye thousand and thousand of eyes and they are producing thousand and thousand images and that image therefore most of the insects they can see in the dark lights but in the more light their image will be hazy this is you just see how the human eye and compound eye that is the insects eye and human eye human eye is simple eye only one eye and compound eye present in the <coughs> in case of insects so octopus is the organism which has possessed the first simple eye octopus there is a mollusca which possesses the first simple eye the so human eye and octopus eye you see this is the similar this is human eye and this is octopus eye similar in structure therefore this is the first organism from the invertebrate then vertebrate that is just like our eyes they have similar eyes next you come how limbs these the limbs has changed these are limbs of whale they have ultimately changed to either wings or our hands or the four limbs of the organisms so here you see this is the swimming pedal of fish so <coughs> different structures have a common ancestral design for example pedals in whale wings in bird long legs of horse etc 
So Dromaeosaurus, you see, possess feather all over the body. Since it is possess feather all over the body, this is the characteristics of bird. Next, our you see Archaeopteris. Another Archaeopteris. It has just started flying. It has the characters of birds and reptiles. This is another Archaeopteris. This is the wings of bird. Next important topic is artificial selection in wild cabbage. So wild cabbage. This is the wild cabbage. So wild cabbage has been changed for our cabbage. Then this is our ordinary cabbage that is for the leaves. Then Brussels. Then Calabri. Then Kelly. This is also for leaves. Broccoli and cauliflower. All the things are coming from the wild cabbage. This is called artificial selection. That is, human being has been selected for a particular variety for our use. So, just you see, everything is broccoli. All the things are coming under the broccoli. Next important thing is evolution tree versus evolution ladder. So, so evolution does not proceed continuously in a particular direction. Multiple branches occur at each and every stage of evolution. The family tree is not similar to a ladder. No species sits at the top. Instead, the tree has several branches with some branches terminating with present day living species. Here you see, here it has been shown that is the human being in the highest position. The other organisms are just in the lower positions. But actually this is wrong. Human being is coming simultaneously from a particular ancestral stock. Some is coming as a human being, some is chimpanzee, some is that, that means some is coming from coming as a gorilla, orangutan. There, that is, chimpanzee is not the ancestor of human being. So, you will study later on about this tree. That is, this is the particular position from where different different organisms are evolved. Next come to the human evolution. You just see the particular map. All human beings have their origin at Africa. Then what happens? They are migrated from West Asia, Central Asia, Eurasia, South Asia, East Asia. Then they populated the islands of Indonesia and Philippines and from there to Australia. Some crossed the Bering land and reached to Africa. So several times the different groups you just see from this is the stages of Africa and from Africa all they are coming in different different direction and ultimately they have evolved. So all the are coming from the Africa and ultimately different different zones in India also come. This is the position of India and then from India they are migrated to different position of the earth and settle there. So now probably you are clear about the what we have studied today, speciation, allopatric, sympatric speciation, then microevolution, macroevolution, mutation, genetic drift, homologous organ, analogous organ, vestigial organ, fossil, fossilization, how occurred by the sedimentation, probably you have uh, understood nicely whatever I have explained. 
determination of the age of the fossil that is the relative dating and absolute dating then evolution by stages what are the different stages by which evolution occurs evolution ladder versus evolution tree then at last we have studied about the human evolution so today up to this you if any kind of problem or any kind of confusion then you please write to me and all the text i will give in my text section you refer to the text then all the text uh, messages and text things you will get and stay blessed for today up to this